Broadcasting from Brooklyn, New York, this is the Brooklyn Baritone Podcast. Hey everyone, it's afternoon when I'm recording this podcast, but whenever you choose to join me, morning, afternoon, evening, nighttime, late at nine, late at night, it doesn't matter. I appreciate the likes, the looks, the listens, but of course I'd appreciate you hitting that subscribe and notification bell on my YouTube channel, Brooklyn Baritone. Of course, do that with no pressure, though I would like the algorithm to swing in my favor. Okay, everyone's talking about the whole slap that's been heard around the world. One of my first thoughts when I saw it, like immediately when I saw it, I said, okay, okay, that's um, very interesting. That put me in a mindset of a famous movie. I believe it's The Dark Knight Returns, or Dark Knight Rises with uh, Bane. And one of the many memorable quotes that Bane said to Batman at their, you know, epic confrontation with each other. Let me see if I can get his voice down properly. Theatricality and deception. Powerful agents to the uninitiated. Basically, if you didn't hear me properly, theatricality and deception. Powerful agents to the uninitiated. Of course, you talk about the League of Shadows, but at the same time, that very much applies to real life circumstances what we're living with every day. Because when you look at all of the Glamour. First off, let's look at the whole thing with Mr. Will Smith and Mr. Chris Rock. And where were they? They were on stage. They were at the Oscars. Now, everybody involved in the slappings, the slapper and the slappy, they were world-renowned, professional, well-paid, famous actors. They were at a venue, basically, is the stage for recognizing actors for their acting ability. So they're well above in front of their pairs. Now they're basically there to put on a show and everything. And one thing that I know that this beautiful country does very well, many beautiful things, many terrible things, but many things that this country does so, so well is they're a, they're able to sell us big from coming up, um, Back in the day, you know, during the 80s, like, you know, one of the best times it rocked for being a kid, especially, you know, you, um, this is before I observed Sabbath and I used to be in, all in for Saturday morning cartoons. They had the cereal, they had the celebrities, you know, they had the clothes, they had the toys, they had everything. Everything you wanted, it was there in all types of flavors and smells and looks. And as I, you know, look further into this beautiful consumerist capitalist society everybody's got to make a buck off of you everyone's got to make a buck off of the public because the public is where all the money comes from that's where the revenue stream is coming from so we're going to have to place all of our attention on these guys here the guys who's waking up every morning nine to five going out there buying diapers buying cereal buying sports drinks buying tv dinners buying whatever it is we have to capture their attention remember if you listen to my podcast in the past i talk about entertainment entertainment means to draw you in and hold you hold your focus and your attention basically there we got to keep the colors coming we got to keep the sounds coming we got to keep the celebs coming we got to keep everything coming so we can sell you whatever it is that we're trying to make either money off of or gain some kind of foothold, whether it could be power, control, whatever it is. So one thing that this country definitely does is make something to sell you. So the way I see it and feel like I don't have my favorite movies, I, I do have movies that I liked, you know, um, look at once in a while. And I had music that I listened to back in the day. I really cut a lot of that stuff out. But at the same time, my attention was there. My attention was there. Why? Because that's what the cultural thing is. So I understand totally that the Oscars is part of entertainment. The thing about it is the most that you could probably hear anything worth contributing 
that any of these people that are on a stage of Oscar or celebrity actor, whatever, the most that you will hear is a contributing factor really, you know, outside of um, giving charity. Of course you have a whole lot of money. Why not? You know, a lot of them get kickbacks and, and compensation or tax write offs anyways, but that's besides the point. The most you would hear someone say that's a contributing factor to society from any of these people here would be like, they're so inspiring. They inspire me to be an actor and inspires me and lets me know that anybody can become anything. It is kind of false because certain things aren't going to be for everybody. But other than that, you know, I'm looking at sports, sports too. Um, I don't get my bills paid when I watch a movie. I'm actually giving money. Uh, whether it is I do it through a streaming service, I'm paying for it, and I'm paying for the internet for it. Or if I want to choose to go to a movie or a venue, I'm paying money for it. Now, I get it. These things, you know, cost money for our entertainment. But exactly what exactly does it do? When it comes down to it, what exactly does it do to improve anybody other than take up your minutes and your hours. There's minutes and hours that we could be focusing on doing other things, but at the same time, you know, again, it's entertainment to draw on our focus and hold it there. Hold it for what? Because again, something is being sold to us or it could be used as a tool as distraction. So we have to understand as everyone's talking about it. Everyone, you know, said something about it. And I believe just like WWE sports entertainment, we know people say it's fake. The actual Move set and impacts, is, they're not fake because you have to have a certain level of athleticism. I definitely give it to them. But, of course, the outcomes are predetermined. So that's what people say. It's fake. This is what I, the vibe that I got when I saw the slapping occurring. I said, this doesn't look like this is off the cuff. This looks like something that was determined in one way, shape, or form. Either all parties were involved as one was involved right now because right now it's milking mode right now because, you know, after like a couple of days and, you know, so-and-so breaks their silence on, you know, the slapping that occurred. I could guarantee you, I was talking to one of my friends, um, you know, Dr. Banner, that I could guarantee you, or look at my other friend too, Mr. Hurdle. It might've been one of them. Either way, I understand that it might be a case of where, you know, this is April now, going into April. Sometime in mid, late April, we're probably going to see some kind of sit down interview with Mr. Will Smith and the interviewer, you know, is going to be like, you know, so, Will, you know, take us to that moment when you actually got up out your chair to hit Mr. Rock. And then, you know, you see the cutaway to Will Smith sitting there thinking, probably almost teary-eyed. And then, you know, you have the narrator pushing whatever it is they're trying to push for the, um, for to, to, to promote the the piece that they're going to do. So they can get everyone thinking about it. And, oh, it's going to be on this Thursday. We got to see what Will, Will Smith says. I could guarantee you it's going to be a scenario, something like that. But whatever. Whatever the case may be, we have to understand whenever they push something hard in front of us, it's to either sell us something and or to distract us. I think it's more of the latter. Yes, definitely the former, but I think at this time it's the latter. So we have to actually look and see what's really going on and what exactly is going on right now that they probably want to take attention away from. Because they're so successful because we've been bred and we've been groomed and we've been indoctrinated so much to look at these things like that. So it's hard for us to avert our eyes. Eyes. So again, just like Bain said, theatricality and deception, powerful agents to the uninitiated. Unfortunately, the masses are the uninitiated, or that's how many people who control all of these things that we see and that we adore, that things that we have our heartstrings pulled and pulled towards. These are the things that people they think that we're all uninitiated. There's a lot of people who know more what's going on. But that's my piece on that. Anyways, I want to get it while it's hot. That's all I got for the day. If you want to get more of my content, of course, feel free to visit my website at brooklynbaritone.com. You can have merchandise there too. You can check it out. See, there's something there for everybody. I can guarantee it. You can also catch more of my video content on my YouTube channel, Brooklyn Baritone. I'm also on rumble.com. I'm also found on LinkedIn under Corey Ashley. You can find me on Instagram and on Facebook. You can get the audio versions of these podcasts on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music Under Podcasts, and other various podcast platforms. I also air on local Brooklyn cable television four times a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays at 12 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Verizon Optimum 
RCN Inspection. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate that. You know, stare care, stare clear of slappings. Being a slapper or a slappy is not good for anyone's health. Anyways, talk to you next week. I'm out.